Naturalist, welcome to my channel. A few weeks ago, one of my subscribers sent me a recommendation that I make a video discussing eucalyptus trees and the pros and the cons, the complications involved. Well, eucalyptus trees are what I have behind me, and it's exactly what we're doing today. So Keon, great recommendation. Eucalyptus trees are an interesting, and while they are not thorny themselves, they present a bit of a thorny problem. But first, a little bit about eucalyptus trees. Eucalyptus trees are evergreen trees. They're large trees. They can grow typically 150 feet tall, and some get much bigger than that. They're native to Australia. And they have some beautiful properties. The young leaves, let me show you these. The young leaves are these sort of ovally spade-shaped leaves. Very pretty. And the adult leaves grow into this absolutely iconic, sort of long scimitar crescent-shaped leaf. See it there and they hang down from the stems as the stem grows out from the tree like that. Beautiful leaves, sort of a waxy coat to them. They're very oily. They smell fantastic. Eucalyptus oil is, is a prized and very commercially viable um, additive to many things. Their uh, flowers form these little sort of round flowers and that then grow and harden into what is called a gum nut, which is that thing right there. So this is the hard, mature fruit that is developed from the flower after it's fallen, after the fruit has fallen from the tree. So like I said, though, they're native to Australia. I'm here in Central California. This is a grove of rather large eucalyptus trees behind me. How'd they get here? What are they doing here? What's going on? Well, the story's kind of a funny one, I think. In the 1850s, in California, right around and right after the gold rush, there was a huge demand for timber. Timber for building houses, timber for building railways, timber for building bridges and other structures, all sorts of need for timber. And so, many different sort of business uh, types went looking for a good tree that could grow straight and fast and could produce a lot of wood. And they landed upon, for various reasons, the eucalyptus tree. Most of them focusing on something called the blue gum eucalyptus tree, which is what all of these are. And so they imported tons from Australia and some from Europe as well, because some had already been planted in Europe. And they started planting eucalyptus trees in California like crazy. Millions of trees, huge plantations stretching for miles to grow timber fast for the growing state of California. And the trees at first, I mean, the trees did really well. The trees were super happy. The trees are used to sort of a Mediterranean climate in Australia. And that is exactly what they found here in Central California. And so, in especially sort of the coastal areas where the fog comes in and brings a fair bit of moisture, the eucalyptus trees were very, very happy. And at first, all those business types who had planted them were also really happy. They thought, all right, this is gonna be a great investment. But then when the trees got, you know, big enough to harvest, they cut a bunch of them down and they milled them for lumber and they realized that they had a problem. And that is that eucalyptus wood, in part because it grows so fast, has a lot of stresses and strains inside of it. 
And as that wood dries, after you mill it down to a flat board, as that board dries, it twists and cracks and splits. Almost useless for timber. So that entire business venture, the entire investment was largely a bust. It really never became the commercially viable timber source that people really hoped that it would be. But I mean, there are already been millions and millions of eucalyptus trees planted in California and they were doing really well. Heck, even the ones that got cut down, eucalyptus have the uh, ability to re-sprout from their bases. So even the ones that were cut down for, for timber, those trees didn't actually die. They just re-sprouted and kept growing. And other uses for these trees were found. Um, because they grow so fast and because they can grow quite densely, they are great for windbreaks. And so people would keep planting those for windbreak purposes, for shelter, for shade even along roads and along the edges of fields or orchards to kind of protect the crops. So eucalyptus trees kept being planted for a long, long, long time. And so that has resulted in many, many, many hundreds of acres of eucalyptus trees all across the coastal California range and even other places in California. Central California, there are eucalyptus trees. They are not quite as happy there, but they still grow. So yeah. There are a lot of eucalyptus trees in California now. And that poses a bit of a problem because, I mean, A, any area like the one that I'm standing in right now that has a bunch of eucalyptus trees is area where those trees have pushed out native trees. So this could be a coastal redwood tree grove. This could be a coast live oak grove, but it's not. Those trees were pushed out and it is now a eucalyptus grove. So bad for the native trees. And there are many ripple effects that they are bad for other groups of plants and animals. If you go to a eucalyptus forest, you will notice that the trees drop a lot of leaves and actually their bark even sheds off. So you get this sort of litter on the ground, this layer of eucalyptus tree detritus. And that really keeps down a lot of other species of plant. So the ground underneath a really dense eucalyptus forest is usually, mostly, a lot of eucalyptus leaves and bark, and not a lot of other species. Also, people have done surveys on animals and found that insect diversity is much lower in eucalyptus groves versus, say, live oak groves. Amphibian and reptile populations and diversity are much lower in eucalyptus groves versus live oak groves. And to a certain extent, mammals also seem to favor live oaks, and they do worse in eucalyptus trees. One group that's been surveyed that seems to be relatively awash are birds. They're about the same number of species of birds that use eucalyptus as use live oak or even other groups. So, you know, birds are sort of a, a, a wash. It's a tie. Although, speaking of birds, there is one myth that I want to dispel, and that is that eucalyptus trees cause bird death. So there's a, there is a myth that when birds go to feed from eucalyptus flowers, that the nectar and the, the actual gum, sort of sap from the eucalyptus, clogs up their beaks and clogs up their nostrils so that it makes it hard for the birds to open their mouth or to breathe or to feed. There doesn't seem to be any evidence, any actually sort of rigorously produced scientific peer-reviewed evidence that this is true. Birds can clean their beaks. They're very effective at cleaning themselves and preening. They spend a lot of time at it. There's no specific evidence that they are unable for some reason to get the eucalyptus sap or pollen or nectar off of their bodies. People have not found huge die-offs of hummingbirds and kinglets and other sort of nectar-eating birds under eucalyptus trees or 
found lots and lots and lots of birds dead elsewhere, but that have gummed up beaks. There have been a few accounts of these, but really pretty small numbers. I mean, just handfuls here and there. And I mean, birds die. So finding a handful of birds that have eucalyptus nectar on their bills isn't really very surprising. So this doesn't seem to be a thing. It's often reported as a thing. It's not a thing. Um, although if anybody really wanted to jump in and do a scientific study on it and really survey a lot of it, I think it could be kind of interesting to, to sort of rigorously scientifically prove one way or the other. But at this point, there's no reason to believe that eucalyptus trees pose some kind of tremendous existential threat on the birds that feed from them. But they do pose a definite impact, a definite uh, negative impact on all those other groups of organisms that I just talked about. Amphibians, insects, reptiles. And so for that reason, people often advocate to really remove eucalyptus trees from the area. There's also another reason that people often advocate for removing eucalyptus trees, and that is the fire danger that they pose. So I mentioned that they spend a lot of their life dropping leaves and shedding bark, right? And that, that bark sort of forms this, this bark and leaves forms this detritus layer on the forest floor. That bark also, as it strips off, kind of catches on lower branches. So you get these sort of many branches at many different heights draped in dead eucalyptus bark on these trees. And as I also mentioned, there's a lot of oil in the leaves and the bark of these trees. Oil is flammable stuff. And this is where the problem comes. Eucalyptus trees are a major fire danger. When a fire gets started in a eucalyptus grove, it burns that ground level really fast, really hot because of those oils and all that dry litter. And because of those branches that are sort of draped with bark, the fire can get up into the trees and up into the canopy very quickly. And because of all the oils in the tree as well, those trees then burn really hot. And as those pieces of bark break off burning, they can be blown by the wind in front of a fire and drop more burning embers ahead of them. And so they can really contribute to very fast, very extensive, very dangerous spreading fires. And in fact, many of the fires in Central California, um, especially in sort of coastal California, you can, you can see where, where eucalyptus trees have played a part in making the situation worse. And so from a fire safety, fire danger perspective, that's another reason why people really say, look, we should remove eucalyptus trees. Now, I mean, removing eucalyptus trees is hard. It takes a lot of work. They're big trees. The wood is heavy. They are often a lot of them in a grove. You're not talking about removing one or two trees. You're talking about moving hundreds of trees. So it's a major endeavor. And like I said, when you, when you do cut them down, they will re-spread from the base. So you have to do something. You have to dig out the stumps or you have to treat them with an herbicide to make sure that they die off completely. It's, it's a continuing problem. However, it has been shown to be pretty dramatically and distinctly worth the effort. There have been a few groves of eucalyptus trees that have been completely removed and then replaced and replanted with young like live oak saplings. And then after those oak saplings grow, all the birds and the understory plants and the amphibians and reptiles, all those animals that were pushed out by the eucalyptus trees, that did worse in eucalyptus groves than the live oak groves. They come back, they find those live oak groves, those young ones, and they start coming back. And as those live oaks get bigger, the biodiversity just gets better and better and better and better and better. So while being difficult and time consuming and expensive, definitely I think it's worthwhile to remove eucalyptus groves and replace them with other species of tree, native species of tree. So, 
bit of an issue, bit of a problem, definitely something to tackle. And there are definitely people who love eucalyptus trees. There are people who see them as, as having sort of become iconic to Central California even. That, that they're such a part of the landscape that to remove them would really be removing something important from California. They point to the fact that there's kind of a wash between birds in eucalyptus versus other species of native tree groves and say, look, let's just leave them alone. Let's let the birds do their thing with the eucalyptus trees and, you know, it's fine. Um, so there are definitely people who, who make a stand in favor of eucalyptus trees. Um, I think overall, though, the case really can be made pretty so soundly for the need to remove them, um, for, for the removal of this non-native species and to replace those areas which are currently eucalyptus groves with groves of species that actually did evolve in this ecosystem in California. Oaks, bays, redwoods, etc. So some food for thought, definitely. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you gained something about the eucalyptus trees in, that we see around us in Central California. And I hope you go out and see some forests. Thank you very much for the view. Subscribe to the channel and until next time, enjoy the natural world.